a body said to be in, moving in a uniform circular motion moves with a constant speed. Constant speed V. Please, I said constant speed, not constant velocity. Okay? It's not the same thing. So a body, let me draw the circle well. A body is in circular motion. It starts from a point A with a, with a, with a speed V. Now, it starts from a point A, and then within a time interval T, comes to a new position B. We learned that for circular motion, the body's displacement within the circumference connects to an angle described at the center. So first position A to a new position B. This linear displacement at the center at the, at, within the circumference connects to an angle described at the center. This angle we are calling as delta theta, or let's make it d theta. Please, when I use either d or delta, I mean small change, meaning we are looking at a small change in the displacement. So it has moved from A to B, Using a time interval, the, um, this is the theta. The time interval taken to move from A to B, the T. Please, I hope you are following. Yes, please. Yes, when please. the body is at A, its speed, its speed is in, is in this direction. When it gets to B, its speed is in this direction. Now this speed at A, the speed at A is tangential to the circle. When a line is said to be tangential to the other, what it means is that it makes an angle of 90 degrees with the radius. So this speed along this line, V, makes an angle of 90 with this radius R. Its speed V at B also makes an, uh, also creates an angle of 90 degrees with this radius. Play this is also a radius too. This, this is also R. And this speed, its speed at B also makes that angle of 90. So the body is moving with a constant speed. Meaning, assuming its speed here is five meter per second at A, it is also five meter per second at B. And the speeds here, equal, the constant speed at A and B are all tangential to the radius, meaning making an angle of 90 degrees with the radius. All right. Now, though, uh, though, the body moves at constant speed V, constant speed V, due 
to the changing direction. The changing direction. Its velocity at A and B. Its velocity. Its velocity at A and B changes. This body is moving with a constant speed, but due to the changing direction, its velocity at A changes. And so the velocity at A, let's call it V1. Its velocity at B is also changing. Let's call it V2. Okay, so now what is velocity? Velocity is defined as change in displacement with respect to time. One way of uh, defining velocity. Another way is that we can have constant velocity but changing direction. And, and this is the situation we have here. The, velo uh, the body has a constant speed, but because of its changing direction, its velocity at different uh, positions of the body also changes. The reason for which we have uh, velocity at A at V1, let me make it VA to go with the position. And the velocity at B as VB. Please, are we okay with this? So we have velocity, change, change in velocity due to the changing direction. Even though the body is moving with a constant speed. Please, are we okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So let me, let's draw. If we look at the velocity of at a point A, it is the velocity at a point A is in this direction. V A. Then the velocity at a point B. It's also in this direction. VV. Now, this VA is tangential to the radius. VB is also tangential to the radius. Okay, if when you use geometry, you realize that because VA is perpendicular to this. VB is also perpendicular to this. The angle, the angular displacement d theta is also equal to the angle between the two velocities. So the angle between VA and VB is also d theta due to the relationship VA and VB as with the radius. All right. So we have these two velocities acting in this manner. VA, VB. Now, whenever we have two velocities and they are not in the same direction, we can find the change in the velocity. So by triangle law of vector, of vector addition, triangle law of vector addition, we have, VA is in this direction. Then when we draw a vector from VA to VB, acting here, we can conclude that, okay, then VA, VA plus this unknown vector, we don't know, X must be equal to VB from triangle law of vector. So from triangle law of vector, VA plus the unknown vector would be equal to VB. Therefore, the unknown is equal to VB minus VA. And this gives us the change in velocity between 
A and B. So the unknown vector X is VB minus VA. So due to change in velocities at point A and B, we have a change in velocity which acts in this direction. This is delta V. Due to a change in velocity between the point A and point B, we have a change in velocity between A, uh, B, and A. And this is giving us this expression. Please, if you have any question over here, ask before we continue. We are deriving an important relation. So if you have any question here, ask before I continue. If you don't have any question, then I, I proceed. Can I proceed? Yes, sir. All right. Now, so meaning, why do we have the change in velocity? Plus, why do we have change in velocity? Can somebody tell me why do we have delta V? What account for the change in velocity of the body Mr. at D. A? Pardon? Mr. Dia. Uh -huh. um, please, is x equal to the change in velocity? Yes, I'm representing the unknown vector x by delta v. So please, okay. x is equal to the change in velocity. But my question is, why do we have change in velocity, delta x. Yes, Yaba? It's because of the change in direction. Thank you. So, there is change in velocity, delta v, due to the due to the change in direction. In direction at points A and B. Or positions A and B. So this change in velocity, delta V, is as a result of the change in direction of the body at point A and then point B. So if you are asked why the change in velocity does it. So we have linear velocity at A, V, A. We have linear velocity at B, V, B. And this linear velocity creates change in uh, velocity delta v. Now, whenever there is a change in velocity occurring within a given time, what happens? Whenever there is a change in velocity occurring within a given time, what, what follows? Acceleration. There is acceleration. So, due to the change in velocity, occurring at point A and B, there will be acceleration because acceleration is due to the change in velocity with respect to time. So now this is linear velocity at A. This is also linear velocity at B. Linear velocity at A, linear velocity at B. So. This linear quantities create change in velocity. So we also have linear acceleration. So the linear acceleration, linear acceleration of the body in circular motion would be equal to delta V over dt. Don't forget, it took 
time, small time dt to move from point A to B. So dt. And this is equal to V2 minus V1 over that small time taken by the body to move from A to B. That will be the expression for the linear acceleration. Now, another point of interest is that we want to determine the direction of the linear acceleration. So we have a linear acceleration coming in due to the change in velocity or change in velocity of the body due to the linear acceleration. It can be the other way around. What is the direction of this linear acceleration? happening as a result of the change in velocity. That's the next thing to look at. So let me clear this part of the board. Please, this part is a bit technical. So if you don't understand something, do not swallow. Ask. Yes, Adumajima. Okay, I am. Salut. Mr. Dia. Um, please, I don't get um the part where you explain that there is change in velocity due to um the change in direction on point in points A and B. I don't get like what changes occurred in point A and B. Salut. This body yes. has a constant velocity V in this direction. What you have to understand is that whenever a body is in circular motion, its direction is always changing. So, when the body is here, this is a direction. When the body is here, this is a direction. When the body is here, this is a direction. And here we are looking at the body moving in anti-clockwise circular motion. So a body in circular motion has a changing direction with time. And so the body is moving. Start from A comes to B with a constant velocity, maybe five meter per second. So we have five meter per second in this direction of the arrow. When it came to B, we have five meter per second at, at the point of B. Now, even though we are looking at this body traveling with a constant velocity V, example, five meter per second, but in direction at point A and B is changing. Charlotte, are you okay? Yes, please. The direction is changing. And due to the changing direction, its velocity would also change at point A and B. What is velocity? We define velocity as the rate of change of displacement with time, one, or a change in direction with constant speed. So the speed can be constant, but the moment the direction changes, it will yield to velocity. Charlotte, are you okay? Yes, please. The reason for which we are saying that, okay, the velocity at the point A is VA. The velocity at the point B is VB because even though the speed is constant, but the directions isn't the same. And so it changes the velocity. That's why we have VA at A and VB at B. Have I answered you? Yes, please. Thank so, you. So due to the changing direction, we'll have change in velocity. Though the speeds are is constant to both of them, but that due to the changing direction, we have different uh, velocities. The reason for which we'll have 
change in velocity, which is VB minus VA. And whenever there is a change in velocity occurring within a given time, we'll have acceleration. But this acceleration will be linear because the, um, the velocity VA and VB are linear quantities. Plus, I hope you are following. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's such that if you don't take your time to explain, it will be something. So we are interested in the linear acceleration which comes as a result of a change in velocity. We are saying that that linear acceleration is VB minus VA. The time taken to move from A and B, B theta. Now we are interested in the direction of the linear acceleration. What is the direction? First, you see, this is changing velocity over time, the t. Time has no direction. It's a scalar quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. And so the change in velocity would be, would be a vector. Meaning that when we are able to determine the direction of the change in velocity, we will have the direction of the acceleration. Because time is a scalar quantity, velocity is a vector quantity. When we get the direction of the change in velocity, that will be the direction of the acceleration. Are we okay here? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Yes. So we are, we are going to look for the direction of the change in velocity, which creates the acceleration. Fasten your seat belts and then cruise with me. Now we are saying that the theta, can I clean the side of the board? Because I'm going to use this drawing. Yes, please. The expression d theta means a very small angular displacement. So theta d theta is a very small angular displacement. If the angular displacement is so small, then it means that we are reflection. It means that the sum of this and this must approximately be equal to 180. Assuming this is A, B. So within that triangle, let me redraw it quickly because of the reflection. This is VB. This is VA. This is delta V. This is very, very, very small angle. Maybe 0 0.5 radian. So if this is very, very small, then this plus this, A, B, plus B, is approximately equal to what? Can somebody help me? If the theta is very, very small, then A plus B is approximately equal to? 180. 180. We are not being exact, approximately, okay? Now, in terms of speed, magnitude of 
this they are equal equal speed this in terms of magnitude here we are overlooking the direction this is equal to this and this is very very small if this is equal to this then almost we have a situation of isosceles triangle this is approximately 90 this is approximately 90 please let me pick this call from my hod and get back to you okay okay from the commercial break. So this is almost 90. Please, I'm not saying exact, almost, meaning I'm not overruling this small value, almost. Please, is it agreed? I'm not ignoring the small angle, the theta. That is why I keep on using almost or approximately, right? So if this is um, the theta is a small angle, then these two angles are almost 90 degrees, almost would sum up to 180. Now, if assuming this is 90, and then this is the remaining angle, which is almost this, then we can say that VA. VA is perpendicular to perpendicular to delta V or delta V is perpendicular to VA. Please, are you fine? Class, are you fine? Yes, please. So if this is a very small angle, maybe 0 0.5. It means when I sum this and this, it must approximately be 180. Okay. This having the same magnitude speed implies that this is almost 90. This is almost 90. If this is 90, then we can say that the change in velocity V is perpendicular to either VA, either VA or VB, because both are almost 90 degrees. Abba. Sir, please, because you said um, their magnitudes are the same, does it mean? the angles will always be the same or they will be different. See, this is a small angle. By speeds, the, by speeds, don't forget, the velocity comes in because of different directions. But by speeds, VA and VB have the same magnitude. Okay, that is why I said magnitude, by speed. Now, if they have the same length of, they have the same length at VA and VB, then it almost looks as if this is an isosceles triangle. With an isosceles triangle, okay, as same base angles equal. The reason for which I'm saying that this is almost 90. And this is also almost 90. So if this is the case, then the change in velocity S can be said to be perpendicular to either VA or VB. Abba, are you okay? Yes, yes. So depending on whether any of the angles are 90. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Okay. And so we have noticed that the change in velocity is 
perpendicular to either VA or VB. Come to this drawing. We are saying that delta, delta V is perpendicular to VA. This is VA, tangential to this radius. Then by equal vectors point of view, don't forget vectors are said to be equal no matter where they are. If they have the same magnitude and direction. So if delta, <clears throat> delta V is perpendicular to VA, then we can we can draw V delta V along. Oh, this marker isn't helping me. Please let me change the marker quickly. If delta V is perpendicular to VA, this is VA, then we can bring it along the radius because the radius is already perpendicular to VA due to equal vectors. Though it's here, delta V acts in this direction. But vectors are equal no matter where they are if they have the same magnitude, direction, and are parallel. So even though delta V is here, once delta V is perpendicular to VA, we can bring it along the radius and will still be perpendicular to VA. Please, is that okay? Is that, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Please. So we have the direction of delta V. If it's about delta, um. Delta V and V, we have also seen that this is also almost perpendicular. And so Delta V can also be brought along the radius and it will still be perpendicular to VB. And so what we can deduce from this is that the change in velocity, which is creating the acceleration has a direction towards the center of the circle. Okay, it's along the radius, perpendicular to VA and VB. So the direction of the change in velocity is towards the center of the circle. So we have identified the direction of the change in velocity. So the change in velocity delta delta v has a direction towards the center of the circle. And so what do you think is the direction of the linear acceleration? What do you think is the direction of the linear acceleration? Yes, class, what do you think is the direction of the linear acceleration? Oh, anybody to share that with us? What then is the direction of the linear acceleration? Then let me let me give it to Abba. Abba, what do you think? We've seen that the change in velocity has a direction towards the center of the circle. What do you then? Uh, what do you think would then be the direction of the acceleration? Step is M O A. Come again. Step O A. Okay. So 
you think the direction of the acceleration will also be towards O, the center O. Is that your answer? The PCS. Why? Why? Why do you think the direction of the acceleration would also be towards the center? Please, because you said a change in velocity has a direction towards the center. Mm -hmm. And yes. it, is the, it is the change in velocity that creates the acceleration. Mm -hmm. We just define the acceleration to be change in velocity over time. And because time is a scalar quantity, has no direction. Determining the direction of the change in velocity gives the direction of the acceleration. Please, are you okay? Yes. yes. So, the acceleration, the linear acceleration is also directed towards the center. And because of this, this acceleration is also termed as centripetal acceleration. Centripetal acceleration. It is given the name centripetal acceleration because this acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle. Last time I told you that Centripetal force means that center-seeking force is a force that is always seeking the center or directed towards the center. Okay. And so this acceleration, which is formed or which we the body experiences due to the change in velocity is also known as centripetal acceleration because its direction is towards the center. Or either it is known as centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration. Radial acceleration. And it is radial acceleration because its direction, you see, look at the direction of the change in velocity. It's along the radius of the circle. And that is also the direction of the acceleration. So because the acceleration is along the radius, it is also um, said to be radial acceleration. So that's the meaning of centripetal acceleration and radial acceleration. They are the same um, terms, but it is just in connection with the direction. Class, are we fine? Yes, please. Yes, please. Now, in physics, whenever there is acceleration, there must be what? Deceleration. Whenever there is an acceleration, there must be there must be a what? Yes. A change in velocity. Uh, yes, change in velocity creates the acceleration. But when there is an acceleration, every acceleration is due to what? On what condition would a body accelerate? I thought this house also. Increasing velocity. Yes. Yes. Increasing velocity or decreasing velocity, but there is something. A body accelerates only when hey. a change in velocity. Change in velocity, you said it. Agreed. But there is something. Change in direction. Yeah, yeah, and we've talked about <laughs> Newton's second law of motion. 
Newton's second law of motion stated. I want somebody to state it. State Newton's second law of motion. The time rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction of the force. Good. So mathematically, this you write as F is equal to M A. Meaning that acceleration is directly proportional to what? Force. The external force. So every acceleration is also caused by external force. It is an external force which creates the change in velocity. So it's a package. There must be a change in velocity. And this change in velocity must also be caused by an external force. So if we have centripetal acceleration or acceleration whose direction is towards the center, then we are interested in that force which creates this acceleration because every acceleration is must be caused by an external force. Is that okay? So, Formula wise, the acceleration, centripetal acceleration, we've seen is delta V over T, the T, small time, or V2 minus V1. Okay, we represented B and A over DT. If we are able to get a relation for the centripetal acceleration, we can find that force which creates the acceleration. So that is what we are interested in. So let's get an expression for the centripetal acceleration. We we'll just derive an equation, and that is what you'll be using for the rest of your life. So don't be troubled. <laughs> if we take this small triangle here, we have this side of the triangle is the displacement from A to B. So this side is the radius. This is also the radius. This side is the S, small displacement from A to B. The angular displacement we are saying is the theta. Let this be a small angular displacement, the theta. From the center, this is the radius. This is another radius. So let's pick this second triangle. We are looking at magnitude. Here we are overlooking the direction. So this side has the same magnitude V. Then this side also has the same magnitude V. This side change is the change in velocity delta V. And so this is a sign because of the relationship. Tangential, tangential to the two radii. So this angle would also be equal to what is here, the theta. Now we want to have an expression for the theta. Whenever you have small angular displacement, small 
displacement, linear displacement, it always looks as if this side is perpendicular to this side. So it behaves like a right angle triangle. When you consider small parts within a circle. So if I want this sign, if I take sign of this small angle, the theta, this is equal to the opposite ds over the hypotenuse, which is the radius. And because this is a small angle, sine, cosine, and tangent of small angles in radian is approximately equal to the angle. So because the theta is a small angle, when you take the sine, the cosine, or the tangent of very small angles in radian is equal to the angle. So sine, sine the theta is equal to the theta. So this part behaves like the theta is equal to the S over R. We have the yeah. same thing. Mm -hmm. Please, did you say did, did you say that sign the sign cost and then tangent of small angles in radiant in the radiant yes. is approximately equal to or is just equal to it's approximately almost equal oh, okay. to the angle that angle that is why though I have signed the theta but I omitted the sign and wrote the theta meaning there's the angle. The angle in question is the theta. Are you okay? Yes, sir. We have the same thing also happening here. Because delta V, this is a small angle, and delta V is also small. It also behaves as a right angle triangle. So when you take the sine of the theta, you have opposite, which is delta V, over hypotenuse, which is V. So this is like having equation one with respect to this diagram, having equation two with respect to this diagram. Now sine the theta is equal to the, um, the theta. So you have equation one, the theta is this, equation two, the theta is this, meaning we can equate this to this. So, the S over R is equal to delta V, delta V over V. Now, there is small angular displacement. There is small linear displacement all occurring within a small time interval dt. So let's divide both sides of the equation by time. So this side, the left-hand side, either divided by time or multiplied through by dt. The time interval from A to B is dt. So times 1 over dt times 1 over dt. Now look at the left hand side. We have ds, ds over dt times r, times r equal to delta v over dt times one over v. Class, what is what is the S over the T? Or what is 
though the D means small. But what is S over T? V. That is velocity, V. So we have the left hand side to be V over R. Is equal to what is dv on dt or v on t acceleration acceleration charlotte i'll come back to you yes please now when let's cross multiply when you cross multiply and make a the subject you have a equal to v squared over r. And this is the expression for the centripetal acceleration c. So the centripetal acceleration is given by the square of the constant speed v divided by the radius of the circle. Charlotte, ask your question before I continue. And um, please, I, I don't get why you multiplied both sides by one over dt. It's like, you see, change in, change in displacement from A to B occurs within a given time dt. And the change in displacement is also what is bringing about the change in velocity. The reason for which I divided both sides of the equation by time, because they are all occurring due to the changing displacement or the changing time. Okay. Yes, please. So it's just because both situations are happening within um, a, a given time interval. So we have the centripetal acceleration AC, which is directed towards the center along the radius to be equal to the square of that constant speed over the radius. And so if Every acceleration is caused by a force. Then that force, F, F would, is, is also equal to M times AC. If AC is this, then that force, which is causing the acceleration, is also equal to M times v squared over r. And this is what we are calling as a centripetal force. Centripetal force equal to m v squared over r. That is all. So this is where we got the formula for centripetal force. It is actually from centripetal acceleration. And the centripetal acceleration is also caused by a change in velocity. And the change in velocity is also caused by what? Is also caused by what? I'm listening. Change in direction. The change in direction. So this is this is how the whole thing develops. When you have a change in direction of the body, you have change in velocity. When there is change in velocity, there will be acceleration, which has a direction towards the center. Once there is a, a certain acceleration towards the center, then it means that there is a certain force which is doing that. And that force must also have a direction towards 
the center. And this, the reason why the acceleration, uh, the force also has a direction towards the center is this. The force F is given by mass times acceleration. So if you are looking for the direction of the force, mass is a scalar quantity. Acceleration is a vector quantity. So the direction of the acceleration becomes the direction of the force. That's all. Are we okay? Yes, please. All right. So we've just realized that or noticed that centripetal force, which is a force that enables objects to stay within a circular path. This is actually caused by centripetal acceleration. Because we have a centripetal acceleration, the reason for which we have a centripetal force. Please, if you have question, ask. Are you there? Let me check attendance. Hey, attendance isn't good though. Abba is here. Equia Jema. Aduma. Amma. Chrysler. Hey, Chrysler is quiet too. Evram. Evrama. Kerstin. Or Kimberlin. Kimberlin, you are new. Yes, Kerstin. sir. Mm -hmm. Kimberlin looks new. Kerstin. Lane. Yes, please, uh, I am. Okay. Na Nanama, Samuela, Uchi, Yaba, the rest are resting. <laughs> All right. So, F is equal to M V squared over R, where M is the mass of the body, V is that constant speed. Please, we are looking at uniform circular motion. We also have non-uniform circular motion. Okay, so this is for uniform circular motion. Now, this relation can also... Okay, Amma. Mr. Adria, please. Um, the, so, questions can be specific about the acceleration they they seek first to find right maybe yes, yes. i'm saying you get a formula a is equal to r times angular acceleration that one maybe they might state it as linear acceleration right I, that is yes the linear acceleration okay comes in when there is a change in linear velocity I'll, I'll relate it, okay? Okay, little. So what makes it different from a centripetal acceleration? So a body in circular motion. There's a body. There's the center of the cycle. When the body moves from A to B, because of this change in direction change in velocity will have an acceleration directed towards the center. Because, okay. because of the change in velocity, we also have, you see, because of the change in velocity, we also have a velocity which is tangential, tangent, meaning perpendicular to the radius along this line, AT. Yes, please. So, uh, this is the tangential acceleration due to the change in, okay, the speed of the body. And then there is a linear acceleration, which is directed towards the center. Okay. 
Okay. So this relation can further be modified. The modification is this. We learned about relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. V is equal to R omega. So if we substitute this into the centripetal force formula, we have F is equal to M R omega squared over R. And this is M R squared omega squared over R. M omega squared R as another relation for centripetal force. So centripetal force can be expressed as this or as this one. I'll take you to when to use this and when to use this one. In the same way, centripetal acceleration A C, which is V squared over R, can also be modified using this. When you put V is equal to R omega within this relation, you have R omega squared over R, which is equal to R omega squared R or R omega squared. This is another way of representing centripetal acceleration. So it's just a modification of these ones, the centripetal force and then the centripetal acceleration using V is equal to R omega. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. All right. So in summary, in summary, Justin, now, nah, are you there? Are you there? Okay. At least, can you move your camera down a bit? I don't want to write something. Thank you. Please let me know it's when you done. finish. Okay. In summary, this is what we are saying. A body is moving at constant speed. Moves with a constant speed. V. Now, due to the change in velocity, uh, direction, the body accelerates. A change in direction, we have a certain change in velocity that causes acceleration of the body. So there is, there is acceleration directed towards the center, known as centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration. You see, in linear motion, we learned that a body only accelerates when there is a change in velocity. When the velocity is constant, when the velocity is constant, what happens? Plus, when the velocity of the body is constant, what happens?
Oh, there is no acceleration. There is no acceleration. Here, we will say that the only time a body moves with a constant speed yet accelerates is when the body is in circular motion. Please, does that make sense to you? Class, does that make sense? Yes, sir. So the only time when a body moves with a constant speed yet accelerates is when it is in circular motion. And this is due to the fact that its direction, even though its speed is constant, but its direction continues to change. The reason for which there will be change in velocity, which will result in the acceleration. So take note of this. The only time a body moves with a constant velocity or constant speed, yet accelerates, is when the body is in circular motion due to the changing direction. So it is like this. A body starts a journey from A. Its speed is in this direction. But due to a change in age velocity, its new direction comes here. So the body is now here. It's at this point. The body follows suits in this direction. But due to a change in velocity, the body's direction is now here. There's the body's new position. So its direction is finally here. This is due to the change in velocity. Change in velocity as the body moves from A, B, C. The body is directed here. Due to a change in its velocity, its position changes from this side to this side. So it is now in here. So A, B, C, D, the body's direction is here. Due to a change in its velocity, its position is now here. So this is it, on and on. When you join this, what are you drawing? When you join all this, what are you drawing? What shape are you drawing? A circle. You are drawing a circle. So it means that whenever there is a change in velocity, a body is forced to stay within a circular path. If we, if we continue on and on and on, we will form a circle throughout. So the circular shape is ha happening due to a change in velocity of the body at every point, circular motion. So the circular motion actually is caused by the change in velocity. And this is also as a result of the changing direction of the body's uniform speed V. Let's see how we can use this to solve a problem. In one of the questions I gave you, the, the, those sets of work I gave you, there is a question under circular, I think centripetal force. I think that is question 9.27. And I read. Okay, let me first drop it in the group. So it is there. It is there. Lane. Hello, Lane. Are you there? Yes, please. Lane, read it for us. I just dropped it in the group. Okay. 
question 9.27 yeah a mass of 1.5 kg moves in a settle radius 25 centimeters at a constant 2.0 revolution per second calculate a the tangential speed b the acceleration and c the required centripetal force for the motion in fact make me proud start to work let me see what you can produce out of this given information. Okay. Let me see what you can produce. So, 9.27. We have a mass of 1.5 kg. The radius of the circle is 25 centimeter. The angular, that constant angular um, velocity, 2.0 revolution per second and you have to find the tangential speed b the the acceleration once we are not being specific it's about the centripetal acceleration it's about the centripetal acceleration and c the required centripetal force for the motion Yes, the answers are here, but I want, I'm interested in how you come by the answers. So let me give you about three minutes. So please have a question. All right. What does um, REV mean? Uh, oh, okay. Kimberly, you joined us just today, right? Yes, sir. Please answer. <laughs> Any one of you must answer the question. I'm tired. <laughs> and let me call um Amma. Amma, please answer. Please, it means revolution. Revolution. I I'm gonna explain further to her because she joined she joined us for the first time today. Hey. Hey, um, <laughs> sir. Yes. Please. Um, revolution. Um, revolution. Lane, Lane and go. You are all here. Aduma. Say, I'm trying. Try, try, try. Um, the revolution that represents the theta. So the angular the displacement. Reason, sorry, the angular thing. displacement. Yeah. Which is theta. Yes. So revolution per second is equal to angular displacement per time. And angular displacement over time is equal to um velocity. But since it's angular, involving angular, angular velocity. Yes, it's related to angle. It will be angular velocity. Okay, so Kimberly, what I'll do is that please, when we finish the class, give me um um hi me. I'll forward the videos to the previous classes to you so you can listen and then follow, right? Okay, that, sir. Um, very important. Else you miss some key points to apply as we move on. All right, so start work, five minutes. Just make me proud.
All right. You've come to your dead end. <laughs> so, so we are told that the mass of the body is 1.5 kg. Mass 1.5 kg The radius is 25 centimeter. The angular velocity omega is 2.0 rev per second. We have to calculate for the linear velocity. So linear velocity, when a body is in circular motion, the linear velocity is always tangential to the circle. So if there's a part of the body, the linear velocity, there's the center of the circle, there's the radius, and so the linear velocity always make an angle of um, 90 degrees with the radius. Okay. So V is equal to the constant radius and the angular velocity. The radius is 25 centimeter. Since, you see, why would I need to, or would I have to, convert to SI unit. I need to convert because look at the mass. The mass is given in kilogram. Radius, centimeter, omega in revolution per second. Because this is in SI unit, it means all other units must be expressed in SI for that compatibility. If you don't do that, it is wrong. Okay. So, 25 centimeter, 0 point or 25 over 100 times. And when I divide, I'm expressing that in meter. I have I have 2.0 revolution per second. When I convert revolution per second, I have two times two pi radian per second. Okay, so this is four. Therefore, this will be 25. So I have, I have pi, and pi is 3.142 meter per second. Is that the answer? Check if that's the, that's the answer. Yes, please. Okay. The answer is 3.1. Yes, so you can... You can easily do it without using calculator if you follow. Then the next question. B. They are required, okay. The, uh, the acceleration. The acceleration. Amma, how would you determine the acceleration? Um, okay. The, mm -hmm. I'll use the the formula a square to b square on r to determine acceleration. So once it is moving in circular motion, and then the question itself says that the mass of this moves in a circular 
circle of radius is at a constant angular velocity. So it's a uniform circular motion. So the acceleration must be the centripetal acceleration V squared over R. So pi squared over radius of 0 0.25. Am I your hand is still up? Oh, okay. Kimberly, go ahead. And Mr. Flint, I wanted to ask um, if the omega, whenever we're doing it, will multiply it by 2 pi. It's because, you see, the angular velocity given to us is in revolution. And we are changing all the units into SI units because the mass is in SI unit. And so the radius must also be in SI unit. The reason for which I even divided 25 by 100 to convert centimeter to meter. Then it also means that the angular velocity must be changed from revolution to radian per second. This is okay, the reason sir. why I'm multiplying two by two pi. Okay, sir, thank you. All right. So please check this out for me. What's the answer? Hello, what's the answer? Twenty-five point two. Twenty-five point one two. Let's check again. Sir, please, you guess thirty-nine point thirty-nine point four. Thirty-nine point five. Okay, so wh what we have in the book is 39. 39 meter per second squared. Charlotte, be opening your eyes. Ama, your hand is up again. Uh -huh. Sir, please, I wanted to ask a question. Sir, please, I wanted to add that the general questions should be given as would they all be in centimeters and meters or other units will be used like the Amma, it depends on the question. So you work with what you are given in a in a particular question. Okay. All right, then. Centripetal force, the required centripetal Hello. force. MV squared okay. on. So R. I wanted to ask if we. Hmm? I'm, I'm listening. Sir, please, it's fine. Okay. All right. So having the mass 1.5, velocity. 3.142 squared over radius of 0 0.25 you are to input that divide and get the centripetal force and this must be approximately 59 newton okay so i was Talking of, when do we use the other formula? F is equal to M omega squared R for centripetal force. When do we use F is equal to M omega squared R? You see, when the body is in circular motion and the angular velocity is constant, angular velocity, omega, is constant. This is what it means. If a body is moving and it 
in circular motion and its angular velocity is constant. What is angular velocity? Omega is the rate of change of angular displacement with time. So if omega is constant, then what it means is that if the body moves from A to B within a given time interval, dt, and the angle, angular displacement is theta. Then when it moves from maybe B to C, C to D, it must cover the same angle at the center within equal time interval. So a body moving at a uniform or constant angular velocity sweeps sweeps equal angle at the center within equal time interval. That is what it means by a body moving with a constant or uniform angular velocity. So, assuming the body uses a time of one second to move from A to B and in the process covers an angle, maybe 15 degree. I'm just assuming. So, theta is 15 degree within a time interval of one second. If the body is moving at a constant angular velocity, when it moves from B to C, it will cover the same angle at the center within the same time. So it also sweep an angle of 15 degree and will take the same time from C to D, the same angle, the same time, D to E, the same angle at the center, the same time. Then it means the body is moving at a uniform angular velocity, omega. Is that understood? Please, is that understood? Do I have people in the building or they are all asleep? So that's the meaning of, so if the body is moving at a uniform angular velocity, then it means omega is constant. If omega is constant, then we can always calculate for the time taken to make one complete revolution. What is the name given to this time? What's the name given to the time taken for a body to make one complete revolution? Abba. What's the name given to the time taken to make one complete revolution? The period. The period. So when the body is moving with a uniform, okay, angular velocity, we can determine the time it takes to make one complete revolution. We can determine the frequency and we can even determine the number of complete revolutions. That is when we use F is equal to M omega squared R. So when you know that the centripetal force or the centripetal acceleration, you can use this to find F, uh, T, F, or N, number of complete revolution it can make. Let's see. So it means if 
I make omega the subject from here. I'll have omega squared is equal to F over M R. Okay. Now, omega is equal to square root of F over M R. So, when you know the centripetal force, the mass of the body, and then the radius, we can always find, if we don't know omega, we can use this to find omega. If we are to find a period, for one complete revolution, what is the relationship between omega and the period? Yes. For one complete revolution, what is the relationship between omega and T? You can't forget, oh, these are things we've done. So tell me, Len, over to you. Len, for one complete revolution, what is the relationship between omega and the period T, capital T? Len is asleep. Yes, Abba. Please, omega is equal to 2 pi over period. Good. So, because omega is equal to 2 pi over the period T, once I determine omega by using this, I can find the time it will take to make one complete revolution. And that is making T the subject. So T, therefore, would be equal to, yes, somebody to help me make T the subject. How do I make T the subject from here? I'll put the idea on paper and tell me. please the question again we are making t the subject from what we have here Uh -huh. Oh, of course, yeah. I Aduma Salot. T is equal to yes. T is equal to root of four m r pi squared all over m. No way. Okay. Hey. Salot, you have over solved it. This is why. Try. Okay, try. T, T is equal to MR into brackets 2 pi over M, the root of F. It looks as if you are over overthinking. Look at it. I have this. T over, I have 2 pi over t. This is equal to square root of f over mr. 
Do you know we can simplify this to be square root of f over square root of mr? First one. Yes. Your hand is up. Okay, oh. I'm mistaking hand. Mr. E. Jeffrey. Hello. You want to answer? Please. Okay, I, so. I wanted to. wanted to. Yes, please. Okay, let me. Time's sake. So let me go. So we can. We can break this down to this. Now, if I reciprocate the left hand side. Mathematically. I must also re reciprocate the right hand side. So if I take t over 2 pi, I must also have root of mr over root of f, which in effect is the same as root of MR over F or MR over F, okay, to a common root. Therefore, making T the subject, what do I have to do? Multiply through by 2 pi. And so I'll have 2 pi times the square root of MR over F. Please, is that okay? So usually, break it under common root sign. If there is a need for you to take, invert both sides, do it. And then it is easier than, oh, squaring both sides. Anyway, maybe because we physicists apply mathematics. That is how come I'm making it so simple. But it is easier than squaring both sides. Squaring both sides. This side will be 4 pi squared over t squared. No, for us, it looks as if it's a lengthy process for us. <laughs> okay. Now, so this is how I can determine the period. If I want the frequency, I know T is equal to 1 over F. So it means F is equal to 1 over T. Whatever I get for T, I reciprocate it and I have F. If I'm a friend of formula, maybe you want to use formula. Okay, then I can also argue that because 1 over F is equal to t, then I make f the subject from what I have, which I won't give that to you, which f would be equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of f over mr. If the question says, find the number of revolutions, the same period, capital T, is equal to small t over n. So in place of this, put small t over n and make n the subject. You are good to go. So you can obtain a whole lot of things from me. Okay, so this is how we use F is equal to M omega squared. Of course, I'll be looking for a question, then give it to you to try. Okay. We'll generally try solving a question with it. Please, if you have any question, quickly ask. If you have any question, quickly ask. So we've done centripetal force. We've done centripetal acceleration, centripetal force. Our next area 
when we meet on Monday, we'll solve, we'll use about 15 minutes to solve one or two questions. Then we'll look at conical pendulum. I want to do this as quickly as possible so that we clear circular motion, then start simple harmonic motion. Then our friend light. All right. We have about five minutes. Is it five? No. Eight minutes to go. Let's let me introduce you to something quickly. Last time we saw that whenever a body is in circular motion, then the body's motion is aided by a certain force directed towards the center of the cycle. And this today we have seen is due to the centripetal acceleration or the centripetal force. And so examples of circular motion, when a stone is tied to a string and well, we say that the centripetal force is provided by the tension. So when a stone As tied to a string, tied to a string, the centripetal force is equal to is equal to the tension, tensional force within a string. So M V squared on R is equal to T. With this you can find the velocity of the stone or when you find the centripetal force is equal to the tension. So with this expression, you can find the velocity of the stone and then the length of the string. The length of the string will be equal to the radius. This is the reason. Look at this thing. This is an, ob an object tied to <clears throat> a string. I'm demonstrating it on the board. From my hand to the body is the length of the string. If I start moving it so that it stays within the circular path, you realize that as it, as it moves, the length of the string becomes the radius of the circle. As it moves in circular motion, Please, do we see it? Yes, sir. Good. So, in a situation like this, when you find the radius is equal to the length of the string. That's one. Two, when a car is negotiating a bend, the centripetal force, unfortunately, my earpiece is off. All right. Okay, so unfortunately, my earpiece is gone. We'll have, we'll continue on Monday, okay? But I'll send you questions to try yes. your hands on. So be ready. Please, when I give you questions, answer. Else, I'll report you to your parents. All right? So until we meet again, possibly same time, Monday. May the good Lord be with you. Take care and have a fruitful I mean, we can. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.